Oh, that is good. Let's see if I'm wired for sound. Test. There's no sound. Well, that was a good uh, presentation, Jesse. I think we have a preacher in the making here. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Just, um... Yeah, I think I'm wired for sound. We continue uh, last Sunday's message, but don't worry, it's, you can just jump right into it. And uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, was last Sunday, and it was really on the basis of the scripture regarding remnant believers. So the title of the message this morning is Remnant Believers, What Are They? And uh, I'm just reading one scripture where the title is based on, and then I'll, I'll pray to, to open this message, this main meal, spiritual meal. Yeah, reading from Romans uh, 11, uh, 5. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can be together here in this building. And I pray, Father God, that the Word of God will come through clear. It will come in truth and nothing but the truth. Our lives, our ears today are filled with lies through the media. But this morning, Lord, we want to receive the truth. And you are the truth. And I pray, Father God, that the word of God will come through this morning as a double-edged sword, penetrating our hearts, separating the marrow from the bone, the soul from the spirit, and changing our mind. I pray authority on these words. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen. If you remember, and I'll read that scripture again from Malachi chapter 3. That was also the foundational scripture last Sunday's message. I, I read last Sunday from the New Living Translation. This morning I'm reading from the Amplified, amplifying a few things. And it's all based on the two themes that are joined together the fear of the Lord, and remnant believers. Then those who... So Roman, Malachi 3.16. Yeah? Then those who fear the Lord with all filled reverence, that's what the fear of the Lord means, that's why I'm using the Amplified translation, spoke to one another and the Lord paid attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who fear the Lord which means with an attitude of reverence and respect. There's so much lacking in the contemporary church today. And who esteem his name? They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on that day when I publicly recognize them and openly declare them to be my own possession, that is my very special treasure. And I will have compassion on them and spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. There's another image uh, and as a background I want to put on while I'm speaking. We live in a time of testing. And the image speaks for itself. Some will not stand the shaking. This world is being shaken. The church world is being shaken. But we need to hold on to the truth. And nothing but the truth. It's being shaken in many ways. And as somebody said, we live in hard times. Well, what did you think? That the last days was going to be a walk in the park? What a privilege we are born for such a time as this. Not the previous generations who went through the Second World War, First World War, Dark Middle Ages, Spanish Inquisition. You are born for such a time as this. So don't be frightened because fear is the opposite 
of faith. Remember I was talking last Sunday, but you can just write, jump right into this message. Walking in the fear of the Lord has everything to do with a changed lifestyle. It's not some easy, cheap, grace gospel, say a sinner's prayer after me. Oh, now you're a new Christian, here is a gift pack and a free cappuccino, now you're part of the church. No. You have to be, you have to be utterly and totally renewed, a new creation in Christ Jesus, and surrender your life to Him. Amen. It is not a sinner's prayer. It can be helpful, but most people who pray the sinner's prayer don't even know what they're praying. Yeah. Faith comes through the hearing of the Word of God. Yeah. Churches in the past were famous because of the preaching of the Word. Thinking of the tabernacle in London where Charles Spurgeon preached. It wasn't famous for their worship team. It was famous for preaching the Word of God. Today's churches are famous for their worship teams. Well, Lucifer was head of the angelic choir, so I don't know what if get the meaning and drift of that. It's not so much how well songs we can sing and how good musicians we have. The Lord says, worship me in the spirit and in truth. Yeah. It doesn't say, worship me in flashing lights and smoke screens. <laughs> not that it has anything to do with the contemporary church today, that's pure coincidence. So walking in the fear of the Lord has everything to do with a changed lifestyle. I'm going to give you seven examples quickly, which I didn't have time in the last message to address. But it's all connected to the previous message and this message. Listen carefully. Cain believed in God, he was, but killed his brother Abel. They all have in common, they lacked the fear of the Lord. Esau lacked the fear of the Lord, which resulted in indifference towards his calling and sold his birthright for food. Well, the Christians are selling their birthright for food. Think of the prosperity gospel. The people in Noah's time were no atheists. <laughs> we tempted to think they were atheists. They weren't. But did not change their lifestyle, even though they heard Noah, the preacher of righteousness, for 120 years. That's how merciful God is. He also knew that Noah would take 120 years to build that ark with hand tools. But besides that, it was His grace and mercy. The generation that died under Moses in the desert were believers, called out of Egypt, but refused to change their rebellious ways. Doesn't that sound like an easy grace gospel? Oh, I'm free out of Egypt. I'm a new creation. No, it has all to do with a changed lifestyle. Saul, the king of Israel, anointed by Samuel the prophet and appointed by God, feared his men and public opinion, oh, how does that apply to today? Feared his men and public opinion more than the Lord's command to destroy the city of the Amalekites and all living creatures and people in it. He more feared the opinion polls, if they had any in those days. <laughs> Judas, think about that for a minute, was one of the original twelve disciples believed in Jesus, followed him almost to the end, drove out demons, oh yes, drove out demons and performed miracles. But in the end he lacked the fear of the Lord. Seven, the list of famous, talented and gifted pastors, evangelists, ministers of the gospel and worship leaders who have been caught in practicing sexual immorality, financial misconduct, abuse of power and extreme lavish lifestyles over the last 30 and especially the last 10 years is as long as my arm. And the end is not in sight yet. What they all have in common is lack of the fear of the Lord, which is the fruit of an easy grace, prosperity gospel without repentance. Good preaching, Pastor, you're allowed to say that. By that fruit you shall know. Amen. Matthew 7. Oh, uh, sorry, where was I? Oh, yeah, Matthew 7, verse 13 to 14. Just to test you, John, I'll just mix up the water. <laughs> I always do that. 
Daniel. Enter through the narrow gate. I'm reading from the Amplified. I love the translation in this and for this scripture. For wide is the gate. It's three things here. For wide is the gate, and broad and easy to travel is the path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it. Look up for me for a minute, please. We all hear these stories about great revivals. A revival is coming. Revival is coming. The greatest revival will be just after the rapture where millions upon millions and millions could beat themselves and say, I wish I listened to this fiery pastor. I wish I had listened to my grandmother. But I mocked the rapture. I mocked the return of the Lord. And now it is too late, but it will cost my hand. Because the digital ID is on its way, people. And if that not the mark of the beast, pigs fly. Or leading to the mark of the beast. As such. If a pastor or a church or a Christian organization is not warning regarding the times we're living in and teaching the full truth, they need to repent. Because we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and pastors, who on earth wants to be a pastor? They are doubly judged. Judgment begins at the house of God. Amen. <laughs> Wide and broad and easy to travel the path. My Bible tells me that in the last days there will be a great falling away it says in Matthew 24 it says the love and that's not eros that's agape the love of many will grow cold the agape love of many will grow cold and you can only be once a Christian to have the agape love why does it grow cold false doctrines false teaching wrong desires it comes, Christianity comes to taking up our cross daily, yeah. denying ourselves. A lot of people are seeking freedom, they're seeking deliverance, but they don't want to pay the price. Ten lepers came to the Lord Jesus and only one came back to give thanks because the other nine, even though by God's mercy they were healed, they did not want to come back and pay the price and follow Jesus. You love me, keep my commandments. Amen. But small, verse 14, but small is the gate, so it's small, and it's narrow and difficult to travel, is the path that leads the way to everlasting life. Uh, what about this revival? And there are few who find it. But I'm telling you what is revival when I myself or you go every morning on their knees or evening, whatever your work schedule is, and cry out to the Lord for salvation of our family members and pray for the Queensland and Australian government and pray for this world and cry out to the Lord God, how long, how long, Lord, do we have to put up with this? How long does our righteous soul need to be tormented with lies and false doctrines? Well, it's because of the Lord's grace and mercy. <laughs> because the Israelites, they were, by the time they crossed the Jordan, there was 430 years past. And the Lord made a promise to Abraham. He said, I'll bring your descendants back to this land. But he allowed a long time of suffering, not in the beginning, not under the first pharaohs, but later on, at the end of the 4th century, they were there in the land of Goshen, oppression to come. And if the oppression hadn't come, and the slave drivers hadn't driven the Israelites to desperation, they wouldn't have called out to God. And that's the message today. If this world is your home, you're following the wrong gospel. This world is not our home. 
And too many young Christians have been fed an easy grace gospel and sleep around. And think that that easy grace gospel is the Lord Jesus must do this, but He still see your sin. It says without holiness no one will see the Lord. What Australia needs again and what this world needs again is other Spurgeons and Charles Finney's who again preach the gospel as it is. And they don't care about numbers. They just care about disciples and people who are saved. Because I'd rather have a church of 10 people, we all go on the rapture together, and a church of 10,000 people, and 9,999 are left behind. Well, he's fired up this morning. That's because we live in times where we again need to acknowledge who Lord Jesus Christ is, and who the church is, and who the Holy Spirit is, and it's not a game. It's not like, oh, I want to feel some goosebumps. And I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Lord will fill you with His Holy Spirit so you will be equipped to share the Gospel, to preach the Gospel, to make a difference in your own life first. I see people driving around in their cars saying, climate change, action now. I feel like going up to them, take that poster down, or get out of your car. <laughs> what are you driving a car for with that poster? Some of the greenies are driving Pajeros. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't part of the message, but I just had to get that one off my chest. Diesel Pajeros to pick up their children from school. Hypocrites. Anyway, but small is the gate and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads, so that leads the way to everlasting life and there are few who find it. But praise God, you're here this morning. And it is, it's not God's will, it's not some sort of hyper-Calvinism, that God looks down from heaven and says, oh, I don't like you, so I don't want to save you. That's not what it is. It is people's choice. And the cross and the, and the truth of the gospel is still speaking out. It is still a drawing through the Holy Spirit. Remember the title is, is um, Remnant Believers. I just want to encourage us with a few things I, I quickly wrote down. Uh, this week and this morning I added a few things to encourage you with that and I hope you, you recognize something in there what a remnant believer is I could preach on the remnant and it has to do with Israel and the calling of Israel of course for a few hours I'm not doing that I'm just highlighting a few things and I hope you recognize yourself in that or will recognize yourself in it so first I want to talk about the characteristics of the remnant believer. And so listen carefully. They long for sound preaching that will address sin. First of all, that will address sin. Issues of the day. As well as the nearness, nearness of the Lord's return. That's the first one I want to talk about. That's the characteristic or hallmark of a remnant believer in the last days. Remnant believers have offended friends and family or at least irritated them by telling them the truth. This will often bring on mocking, talking from experience here, this will bring on mocking and scoffing and or separation. Prosperity gospel, the easy grace gospel, they're so desperately trying to be popular. Well, follow the Lord Jesus his message was extremely unpopular and by the time he was after three years ministry on the way to the cross there was only a few women and a few disciples left watching him and supporting him at the cross. Where were all the crowds? Oh, they were afraid of public opinion. They were afraid of the Roman legions. They were afraid of what others thought. I don't want to pay the price. The Lord Jesus, he did miracles. He fed people with bread. And they loved it. What a miracle worker. We love a miracle worker. We love the prophet. And then he suddenly said, Foxes have holes and birds have nests. Birds of the ears have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Follow me. Oh, another hundred thousand dropped off. Take up your cross daily. Another hundred thousand dropped off. Deny yourselves. Oh, that's a good one for millennials. <laughs> and all of us of all ages. Deny yourself. 
Oh, and then he said also, die to self. Oh no, it's all about feeling good. I don't feel good about this. You offend me. It has nothing to do with the times you're living in. It's just a random example. So, <clears throat> this will often bring on mocking and scoffing and or separation. But don't, be, don't despair. Random believers, they are willing to travel to attend an event or a church that is not silent about the end time signs. That's the third one. For they will often feel, and I actually want to encourage you with these words if you do so, they often feel isolated and misunderstood. Oh, you with your conspiracy theories, get away. I've heard that. <laughs> Give me some more of those conspiracy theories till so far they all come true. <laughs> uh, when they find someone or a church with a kindred spirit, it's like they're discovering a gold mine and they hug you and kiss you. And I've met people like that, they're not necessarily from our church, but in other places, and they, they, you, you can't just break off the conversation. I met them in Bunnings, I met them in other places, and you, met a, you meet a kindred spirit, it's like, okay, I need to go now. <laughs> because you found a shopkeeper or, or a attendant, he's like, oh, so, a kindred spirit. Not always actually Christians, but they're actually clued on with some things that are happening. And they find a kindred spirit, and to them it's like a gold mine. Another hallmark of, of uh, random, random believers, Christians, they've often been shut out or classed as troublemakers. Talking with their previous church leadership about the false doctrines that they disperse. You're nothing but trouble. Now, understand me correctly that you can't change a church. You need to always come in respect and humility because God has given authority in a church. But often that's the case that they're trying to gently bring up some things that are maybe not correct. But what about this falling in the spirit? And what about these fire tunnels? And what about this? And what about that? Oh, don't you question that. It's the anointing of the Lord. A wise leader, he was actually my mission leader a few years ago when I was a young man. And um, he said to me, if you come in a situation where you can't ask questions anymore, run. That's so true. Because good science is... Scientists challenge each other with questioning each other. Also engineers do that. They constantly, it's almost just like a bickering, but it's not. I mean, I've worked on construction sites, and you hear sometimes engineers talking, they, 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 boast, they bounce off ideas against each other. And, no, that's not strong enough. No, you need to do it like this. Also scientists, real science, they bounce off ideas, they go to a scientific conference and challenge each other. Is it really true? Is it really true? And so, Roman believers, they ask questions politely and gently. Another characteristic of Roman believers, and we, we find it in 2 Peter 2 8, it's not on the screen, it says, Lot, he was a, a righteous man who was tormented in his soul by the wickedness he saw and heard day after day. That's another characteristic of a Roman believer. Is that, I don't know about you, but the things I hear, trying to avoid as much as I can the mainstream media, but when I hear it, isn't your soul tormented with the absolute nonsense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Regarding the sins of Romans chapter 1, yeah. regarding s saving the planet oh, with solar panels that don't only work for 10 years and then heap up garbage. What an absolute nonsense. Zero <laughs> emission. <laughs> we breathe out carbon. Is it just me or, or what? We are 80% carbon ourselves. Oh, maybe the medication they encourage will take care of that carbon. <laughs> is, is it me or is it 
I'm not a scientist at all, and it's like it seems that some who studied a lot, they lack common sense. Anyway, I want to encourage us with these words, not discourage us, but I hope you found some connection in these remnant believer words. But now I want to talk about the characteristics of a remnant church. And uh, John, if you can put on this image, and I'll keep that up in the background. Understand that the end time church is racing towards Laodicea and is more interested in conforming than transforming. Many will focus on your best life now. The, better, the best is still to come. And that probably covers 80% of the titles in the Christian bookstore. Anyway, probably I wouldn't be good to run a bookstore, Christian bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> Because 80% would go, <laughs> we'd just run a loss. <laughs> there would be the, the, uh, the classics <laughs> from Charles Spurgeon and the like. And they would say, oh, you can't run a, bo a Christian bookstore, we don't make any profit. Anyway, the, the Bible suggests that the end time church will be small. In Luke 18a, Jesus asks if he will find faith on the earth when he returns. And sadly, many will have fallen by the wayside. And it's called the great apostasy, the great falling away. But not so for us. I want to encourage us with these words to hold on to the truth, no matter what majority or public opinion says, or uh, liberal theology, or all sorts of false doctrines who have entered the church world in the last 30 years. Hold on to the truth. And say, how is this encouraging? It is in a way encouraging because it prepares you. So, talking about the characteristics of the remnant church, there's eight. Persecution of the Bible believing and practicing church will intensify, but will become stronger the more the world opposes us. What does the Lord say to one of the churches in the book of Revelation? You have little strength, but you have kept my word. Keeping his word means not just reading it, but also practicing it and preserving it. There are so many things in the last 30 years in the Pentecostal churches that are false doctrines that have been introduced. I remember in, in my church, whom I loved, and I came to Christ in that little Pentecostal church um, in a particular country, and that was, that was great, we had such a unity, and then suddenly there came a change of doctrine that came from Toronto, Canada. And I remember talking to the elders and the leaders, and I said, but where is it in the Bible? Show me where it is in the Bible. And there were others as well. Oh yeah, let's look here. Um, when, uh, in, in, uh, when the people tried to arrest, the soldiers tried to arrest Lord Jesus, they fell backward. I said, hello, those are the soldiers arresting Jesus. They are not believers in the church. Mm. Oh, but Abraham fell in a deep sleep when he made a covenant with the Lord God. That's not the same thing. Mm. And I thought I could keep some sense in them, talk some sense in them, and they said, oh, you, you're just not of us. Trouble, You're not of us. Trouble of Israel. <laughs> and I love those brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying is that the remnant church, they will keep his word. Another characteristic of the uh, remnant church is it will become vilified by society and especially the media. Become vilified by society. And it's like, how is that encouraging, Pastor? Well, it is encouraging because we're prepared, and no matter what happens, we will hold on. Amen. We will hold on to the cross. We will grab the altar by the horns, as they did in the Old Testament. Yeah, we have a secure anchor in the holies of holies. And all of that, if the people, the believers, the remnant believers, they will survive now. If the believers, 
in Europe and other parts of the world during the Nazi regime survived and held on, you will too. You can do. They were not super saints. They were just simple believers like us. But when we are holding on to the grace of God, we can overcome. Well, sometimes <laughs> it's a costly price for freedom. The Lutheran pastor Dieter Bonhoeffer had to pay with his life for standing up against the majority. But will you? Will you stand up against the majority? Will you follow the truth? Yes. No matter what the cost? The remnant church will preach a counter-cultural and biblical message. A counter-cultural. They not adopt, adopt a culture so they make it likable for the world around them, but they will preach a counter-cultural message. Amen. And they'll start looking like the world. We have come to a time, and I love some of these songs, and they're great musicians, but some of them look more like worldly concerts than a Christian worship. The uh, remnant church, it will produce the most committed Christians, I'm not talking about big numbers, but it will produce the most committed Christians to making real disciples. You know, the Lord doesn't even tell his disciples to plant churches is a common terminology these days. Plant churches. That's not even a, that's not even in the Bible. Yeah, I'm here to shock you. That's not even in the Bible. Make disciples. Make disciples. Matthew 28. And then when these disciples come together, you have a church. That's the order of things. <laughs> it will produce the most committed Christians. Five, it will experience a greater presence and power of God than the worldly church. A greater presence and power. You know when the greatest power, you probably don't want to hear that, but you know when the greatest power was manifested in the first church in the book of Acts? When two people dropped dead. Oh. Had to call the ambulance. They were actually young men in those days and carried away the bodies. And what does it say? And the church was filled with the fear of the Lord. And I believe that's the key for us and for myself, preaching just as much as myself. That's the key for us today. Because if you walk in the fear of the Lord, you will not walk in the fear of men. Greater, do, you, do you want a greater presence of the Lord in the church? Yes. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> because things might happen that we didn't ask for. I mean, uh, the first church in Jerusalem didn't ask for two burials that day. <coughs> and that's not going to happen. Praise God. Today, other. But I'm just saying. They kept back part. <laughs> It will become, that's the sixth point, it will become more visible and distinct, the, the remnant church, will become more visible and distinct as the culture becomes more immoral, more vile, more hard, and more loveless. We will stand out more. What's the Lord Jesus say? How does the world, it says, how does the world recognize disciples? By their power manifestations and falling in the spirit. No, by the love they have for one another. Yeah. And for the world. Okay. It's all become secular in universities and hospitals. But who, especially in those days in Europe, who started the universities to educate people? Who started the hospitals? which started mostly in France, run by nuns. And they started nuns of mercy, and they started running free hospitals. That's where the word is also derived from, the French word. It originates for love of one another, 
and love for our fellow men. The government wasn't concerned about making hospitals in, the, in, in medieval Europe. It was Christianity or those but even within the religious system showing mercy. And last but not least, just a few little things in closing. It will become... Oh, don't you have that sometimes? You struggle with your own handwriting? You saw that only me. It will become more excluded from mainstream churches and denomination. Denomination, sorry. <laughs> you didn't get that, did you? So anyway, I'll be, you'll become more excluded from mainstream churches and denominations. Eight, and last but not least, the remnant church will be raptured. Amen. As others might be left on earth, besides a few faithful, within these denominations who mysteriously disappeared and they're not UFOs. <laughs> Let us stand to our feet. Thank you Lord Jesus for your word and I just this morning just as much preaching at myself to stir up as you also said to Timothy through Paul, to stir up the gifting in us, to stir up the flame in us, to stir something up to holiness, to stir us up to wholesome thinking. And I pray, Father God, this morning we will be stirred up to follow you no matter what, no matter what it costs. And we agree wholeheartedly with these words. I know your works. I know you have little strength. But you have kept my word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Have a blessing this week. Be strengthened through the things. I think we all face different things and different challenges regarding jobs and future finances. Be strengthened. Be blessed. Because you will overcome this world. In Jesus' name.